Jesus is the author of his name. Let's call him three kings. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of all. There is none like him. He deserves all of our praise. Let's pour it all out to him because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. More than all that we could ever give, give to him. There is none like you, Yahweh. You are worthy, Jesus. And therefore, we've come to worship you. We've gathered at your feet because you deserve all of our praise. Take all the glory, Jesus. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord.
God said, He's living sacrifice. I am the worship. Father, we come before you tonight, not with a song, but with ourselves as a sacrifice to you. We ask that you accept this living sacrifice. We ask that you delight in these living sacrifices. We ask that you will also bring your word to our hearts, and train us, equip us, disciple us, and give us capacity to walk with you, to represent you, and to bring your advantage into various spheres of human affairs. We receive answers to prayers and we thank you for the enabling of the Spirit because we are prayed in Jesus' name. And the people say, believe in amen. amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the living God. Thank you, music, music team, music musicians thank you uh please help me welcome someone close to you into god's presence tonight tell that person you are welcome i like to continue our capacity series tonight i like to um, teach on what i've given the title capacity for skilled service Capacity for skilled service. I think there's a light at the back there. At the entrance. Don't you have a light there? Capacity for skilled service. I'd like you to turn your Bibles with me to Daniel chapter 1. I'd like to read from verse 3 to verse 5. I'm reading from the New English Translation. The New English Translation. Daniel chapter 1. I'd like to read from verse 3 to verse 5. New English Translation. NET. I read. The king commanded Asphinas, who was in charge of the court officials, to choose some of the Israelites who are of the royal and noble, who are of royal and noble descent young men in whom there was no physical defect and who were handsome, well-versed in all kinds of wisdom, well-educated, having keen insight, and who were capable or had capacity, capacity, can also mean to be capable. And who are capable or had capacity of entering the king's royal service. This was like elite service. This was like special service, just like with our police units, we have special units within the police ranks, within the military, we have the armed forces, we have elite parts of the armed forces be it the Navy or Air Force or the land troops, the Army, there are elite soldiers that receive special training to carry out special assignments and objectives. Look at societies like the United States of America, they have different elite um, soldiers. They have the Marines, they have... Um, um, trying to remember some of those others, they have several elite um, um, security personnel within the armed forces of the United States of America. But let's leave that. 
So he said here, who are capable of entering the king's royal service and to teach them the literature and the language of the Babylonians or the Chaldeans. So the king assigned them a daily ration, a daily ration from his royal delicacies and from the wine he, he himself drank. They were to be trained for the next four years. At the end of that time, they, I mean, excuse me, they were to be trained for the next three years. At the end of that time, they were to enter the king's service, provided the capacity was proved. The capacity was there to show that they were able to um, enter the king's service. Capacity for skilled service. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you for different people representing various walks of life. People in transit from one face to another. From one level of life to another level of life. From one level of training to another level of training. From one level of competence to another higher level of competence. Lord, we ask of you tonight the capacity to connect with you, the capacity to download from you, the capacity to represent you, the capacity to effectively engage in different human spheres on the foundation of our work with you and our salvation in you. We ask that you give to every one of us here tonight, as many as are physically present as many as are remotely present, as many as are connected on the various live streaming platforms, whereas the same grace you make available to those physically present will also be available to those who are remotely connected and also the same grace available to those who will watch this and hear this hereafter. We well, thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Because we are prayed in Jesus' name. I like us to, particularly the people on the live streaming platforms and those who we hear this here after. And some of the things we'll be sharing tonight, it will be wise for us to get the recording. If you're not on the um, platform where they post our teachings, hashtag listen to Pastor Tunji, I encourage you to be a part of it. Encourage you to connect, download the message. It will be posted in the next one or two days. And then so download the message and listen again and again. Because I'm very sure some of the things we share tonight. I'm not sure I'll be able to take everything tonight. If I'm not able to complete tonight, I'll continue next week on Discovery Service. But I'd like you to listen to this thing more than once because it will activate some things in you. There's grace in the word of God. Some parts of the word of God have been written from about five, six thousand years ago. The writings of Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy were written about 4,000 years before Jesus came. And you read some of those things, it can bring impartation to you. It can bring divine wisdom to you. It can activate great divine deposits on the inside of you. Uh, the writings of Paul, the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These are writings that have been written from about 2,000 years ago. But read these things. They minister life to us. They challenge us. They deposit spiritual things in us. So it shows us the power of the divine life. That it does not expire. It is not limited or neither does it diminish in its potency by reason of time. That's the capacity of divine life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit. Spirits don't die. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That is, they give the spirit dimension, then they give the life dimension. All right. And so today I want us to take our focus on capacity further, wants us to give attention 
to skilled service and our need to develop capacity for it, capacity for skilled service. But before I get into that, I'd like to share a few thoughts, things we've shared before now on capacity. We are projected from the theme of the year and the underlying scriptures, we are projected three levels and three dimensions of capacity that God can give. From the scripture in Psalm 40, from verse 6 to verse 8, we projected to us a dimension of capacity that can be given by God, that makes us able to hear God, makes us able to comprehend or understand him in such a way that it prompts obedience to him. I read Psalm 40. I'm reading from the classic, classic Amplified or the Amplified Translation, Psalm 40 from verse 6 to verse 8. He says, sacrifice an offering you do not desire. You have, I mean, um, sacrifice an offering you do not desire, nor have you delight in them. You have given me the capacity to hear and obey. And I like to also interject capacity to hear, capacity to comprehend, capacity to obey your law which is a more valuable service than offering bond offerings and sin offerings. And I've told us that it's not that God is against offerings, but these kind of offerings, they are remedial. They are not the standard. They are a means of, he said, it's to obey. When Samuel was scolding and rebuking King Saul, he said, uh, have you obeyed the commandment of the Lord? He said, yes, I obeyed fully. He said, then what means the bleating of the sheep and the neighing of the horses that I hear? And then he told him when you read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, he said, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hack him than the fat of rams. And so he said, I kept the best of the animals we got from the Amalekites to sacrifice to God. No, he said, no, such sacrifices, they are uh, they are." mediatory that's not the original thing god wants obedience rather than trying to appease all right he said bond offerings and sin offerings you do not require then said i behold i come in the volume of the book it is written of me i delight to do your will i delight to obey you oh my god yes your law is within my heart. And I like to say here, everyone who will be able to connect with God starts from the point of being able to hear him. You connect with God in your marriage, connect with God and to be and for salvation, connect with God to find divine distinction at your place of work in scholarship and preceding your ability to connect with God is the ability to hear him. You can't hear God, you can't walk with him. You can't hear God, you cannot even comprehend him. You can't hear God, you cannot obey him. For all the good things Moses did preceding those good deeds were Moses' ability to comprehend. The burning bush was a spectacle to attract Moses to a place where he could hear God. But beyond the burning bush that was ignited by an angel was the voice of the father that started to speak to him. The place where you stand his holy ground, remove the sandals from off your feet. And God started to discuss with him and share great things with him and started to position him for a great prophetic mandate back in Egypt. For all the exploits of Moses, that great journey of exploits could not start until he was able to hear God. I like to say it is a divine capacity or a divine ability that God awakens in us to be able to hear him, to be able to comprehend him, to be able to obey him. And that's why Jesus said in John chapter 6, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. The, it's the Father who gives us the capacity to be able to walk with God in any dimension. All right. Without it, without the ability, the divine capacity to hear God, without it, we cannot truly become saved or become 
true disciples. The capacity to hear and obey God is fundamental towards spiritual awareness and development. All right. You see, for example, about Lydia, that woman that was into fabrics and, and purple and garments, um, uh, was a seller of purple in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Let me read that quickly from verse 11 to verse 15 about Lydia. He says here, Paul talked about their journey as they moved from one territory to the other. He said, therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothras and met, I mean, and the next day came to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city or the most famous city of the part or the region of Macedonia. It's just like you have River State and the most famous city being Paracot. That does not mean you don't have other towns and communities. And so likewise here, Philippi, the most famous or foremost community in Macedonia, a colony. He said, and we were, we were praying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women, women uh, the women who met there. He said, now a certain woman named Lydia had us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshipped God. Look at the next sentence. The Lord opened her heart. So capacity was given, not just in the place of prayer, not just in the environment of hanging amongst other believers. The Lord opened her heart to heed, to comprehend, and to do the things spoken by Paul. Let me leave that. And so you see here, on a first level, which we have established before today, capacity to hear, to comprehend, to obey God. On a second level, capacity to represent God. And this is showcased by developing the tongue of the learned to know how to speak a word in season to weary people. Oh, how we have so many weary, exhausted, challenged, socially challenged, maritally challenged, economically challenged, challenged in career, challenged in health, all over the society today. From nation to nation, you see all manner of challenging situations that make people to be weary and to be exhausted. You see, for example, the Russian-Ukraine war and what devastation that has not only brought to the uh, Ukraine um, space, but also the domino effect it has had on economies and governments across the nations and the threats of nuclear action. You look also beyond that, you see in recent times, recent weeks, military balloons being floated across strategic nations by China, claiming their weather balloons to check weather forecast and to make weather forecast. But it's been realized they are military balloons to, to spy on sovereign nations. And that is not just happening. It's causing some level of uncertainty, some level of panic across concerned and affected nations. See, for example, the uh, 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 um, earthquake that happened in Syria and East, um, Eastern Ukraine, not Eastern Ukraine, very devastating, happened just a few days ago. And in the last few days, over 8,000 um, fatalities counted. And probably the numbers may still rise because, because of the harshness of the climatic conditions. Uh, help is not coming speedily enough. And so I can go on from nation to nation like that. You come closer home, look at what currency swap has generated across the landscape of our nation and how now people are becoming arrested and throwing stones on bank premises. A, a video was posted on a platform I checked yesterday. I think that was on WhatsApp. How banking staff, including female, they went to the back premise of their banking premise and then they were climbing ladder to escape the oncoming uh, restiveness of young people who became tired and wearied of not being able to collect their own money. So you find that with the currency situation. You find also another extreme with the petrol scarcity situation. You see long queues across our city. There are either queues for people to collect their own money or queues to be able to buy fuel. It's a very challenging. So this makes people to be weary. 
This makes people to be challenged, to be exhausted. And how in times like this, we need people with the tongue of the learned. People discipled by God. People enabled by God. People equipped by God to bring a word of comfort, a word of encouragement. Sometimes the situation might not even be able, might not even go away. But by the words, um, the tongue of the learned, um, someone who receives that is able to handle a challenge better. Is able to become more tolerant and have more perseverance to outlast whatever the storms. So one capacity God also is willing to give us in this season is the capacity to have the tongue of the learned, to be able to speak as God's disciples, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring direction to the confused, to bring light to those who are in darkness. Are you still in here? All right. So people need divine agents that can speak both to them and to their situations effectively. So you see, Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4 captures that. But let me move a little bit faster here. But I like to say, in these two, in these two dimensions and expressions of divine capacity, to a great extent, it has to do with handling divine things handling spiritual things, representing divine things, representing spiritual things. Whether you are able to hear God and obey him, or you are able to represent him in bringing the tongue of, I mean, in bringing a word of comfort to the weary. To a great extent, it is divine capacity given to people, given to us, made available to us, so that we are able to help people to a great extent in spiritual things. We're able to help ourselves. We're able to hear God for ourselves. We're able to hear God for other people. We're able to hear God in our situation. We're able to hear God in our delay. So spiritual enabling to handle whatever situation we find ourselves in. A word of hope to the hopeless is still a divine enabling to bring hope to the hopeless. But see, there is a third dimension I want to focus on tonight. That's in the dimension of, like I mentioned, capacity for skilled service. A third dimension, an expression of capacity that comes to play in our everyday life. The housewife, the businessman, the transporter, the commuter, the person working in the workplace, the person functioning within a campus as a student or functioning as a non-academic staff, functioning as an academic staff or functioning as a research fellow, a professor. Things that have to do with everyday life. I'd like us to know we also need capacity and God also is able to give capacity for that field. When we talk about everyday life, everyday life, capacity is needed amongst other things to solve natural problems. How do I get this raw food, um, the food stuff I got in the market to be cooked, to serve a sumptuous delicacy, an everyday situation? Solve natural problems. Meet natural needs. And someone is, and people are stranded on the highway. They don't know how they're going to move from one point to the next point. And here you are, you are a transporter. Or here you are, you are, are giving to philanthropy. You are driving a 14-seater bus. You see people stranded. And you say, okay, let me just help you along the way. You drive them for the next five kilometers just to help them to go ahead. You are solving the problem there. You have not spoken in tongues. You have not preached the gospel. But you have solved the problem. So solving natural problems, meeting natural needs. These are areas, everyday aspects of our lives where we also need capacity. Help to develop society where there is a howling wilderness to turn into a habitable, habitable landscape. I remember how um, uh, um, where now you have Port uh, um, modern Port Harcourt city project where you have those high-rise buildings just about a few kilometers from here. I remember how that place used to be, a school field, one primary school, and there, and some and sections of army formations, residential formations for soldiers. And then, because I used to visit in that area, I used to have a friend who was living in that area and had a church in that area. It was such, not a, nothing special of a neighborhood. Not, I mean, it was a struggling neighborhood. 
But see how human engineering, technology, and equipment, heavy equipment has converted. Even though the project is abandoned in the last about eight years, look at the massive high-rise buildings. I think that's the largest concentration of high-rise buildings in the entire state, River State. So now that is, is, that is development coming up there. Capacity given to human beings transform that landscape. And for example, providing effective transport service to people. That is capacity in one area to meet the needs of society. For example, uh, uh, getting on the road to help to tra um, control traffic, either with your engineering incompetence to design traffic lighting that knows the peak periods and how to design the timing, you know, uh, um, non-off peak periods and how to design the lighting so that, I mean, it is such traffic lighting that responds to traffic pressure. <laughs> that is not speaking in tongues. That is not a Bible's teaching service. But we are helping people to get ahead. Or maybe you decide to be there in the midst of traffic. And you help to guide people. And so that what could have made people to be at a crossroad for the next one are wisdom, smartness, directing traffic helps to solve a problem in that landscape. These are everyday life challenges that people need capacity for. It will shock you. You can think tra directing traffic is not just to do like this and to do like that. It will shock you. Go out there anytime from 4.30, 5.30 on a work day. It will shock you how you can become confused. Just here. <laughs> that is not even a major crossroad. It's more of a T-junction. It will shock you. It takes some level of capacity to handle that effectively. Let me mention some other aspects here. Mm. Everyday life, people in school, and students need to be taught. So students need to be cared for. The infrastructure needs to be attended to. Administration needs to be pro um, provided. Secondary school, tertiary institutions. These are areas of everyday life where capacity is needed, and it might have nothing to do with speaking in tongues, though that may galvanize some things in your closet. Maybe in the school, Maybe in the hospitals, in capacity is needed for everyday life and transportation, for ICT, for data analysis, weather forecasting, professionally, law enforcement, security, legal services, advocacy. You don't have to be a lawyer to be an advocate. You can be a social advocate. You can advocate for uh, abused children. You can, I just saw a caption, I couldn't even open to read it, in somewhere in northern part of Nigeria, where one man, I think he was in charge of an Islamic school, had sexually molested young boys. At the last count, at least 11 of them, one 40-year-old man. And so where you advocate for some people to get the justice they deserve, that is capacity you are developing in an area of your life. Helping to solve problems in the society. Do you know how many wives are battered and bruised in their marriages? Do you know how many husbands are also being battered and bruised in their marriage? And here you are, you provide professional counseling, professional service to solve a problem, to give hope in a hopeless situation. That is capacity. ICT, capacity. First casting, you're able to develop a means of making sure what is cast becomes abundantly available. That is capacity. And so I like us as believers to begin to look, don't let me say a way, but in addition to our spiritual competence, our Bible scholarship, how can I bring solution to the society? How can I bring direction to a confused environment? Are you still in here? It could be with artisanship. You are a plumber. You are a tailor. Or you don't like to be called a tailor. You like to be called a seamstress. Or maybe you're a carpenter, or you don't like to be called a carpenter. You like to be called a creative artist, or whatever that is. You're a musician. You're a music producer. All of these things, in all of these seg diverse segments, everyday life, we need to develop competence. And especially, I'm challenging us as believers, you cannot just look unless maybe God has called you, like you called someone like me, even some someone like me, I'm looking at how... What other competencies can I develop to help myself, to improve myself? And so, unless you are strictly called to this, you might not be able to add value in the society unless you develop competencies for everyday living. Hallelujah.
could be photography. It could be tailoring. It could be electrical works. It could be as a mechanic. It could be laundry services. I think a member of the church handles my laundry, not for Samaritan, <laughs> at a cost. And it does an excellent, I love it when he, he's done and they bring those things, even the packaging. I feel like sending those things to him back every day just to go and repackage. Excellent service as a laundry. All right. Um, so we need to put ourselves as believers in a place where we can be found and needed. Every one of you, look at it, look at your life. You need to put yourself, even though you're a believer, speaking in tongues, going to heaven. But you're not here going to heaven. You're still here, and you will still be here. And if we say, how many people want to die now? I'm sure nobody will respond here. Neither will anyone respond on the social media platform. So while you are still here, how can you be relevant? How can you become sought out? How can you no longer be called forsaken, but you are called Hebziba and Beulah, sought out? A city not forsaken. And so we need to understand as believers, we need to put ourselves in a place where we can be found, where we can be needed to solve societal problems, to demonstrate competence in fields of human need. It is not all human needs that are spiritual. One aspect of every human being will be a spiritual need. But it is not every human need that is spiritual. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to provide about it? What solutions are you going to bring to the table in the diverse areas of human need? I've enumerated quite a number of them here tonight. It could be a technology need. It could be a family need. It could be a need for social engineering. It could be a need for leadership or governance. When you read even in scriptures, like in Romans chapter 12, I think it's verse 8, it even talks about the gift of governance or the gift of government and government. You read some translations, it calls it the gift of leadership as a service gift. I mean, the human need could be concerning finances, could be concerning business, could be concerning education, could be concerning entertainment. Listen to me. No matter how focused you are, no matter how serious you are, no matter how spiritual you are, there is a social need of man to be entertained. Some of us might just be by watching nature or National Geographic channel. Some of us might just be, sometimes when I feel so much all around me, I just want to put on the television and watch football. Maybe not even the whole match. Maybe sports news. Just to while away the time and bring down anything on my mind. Entertainment, it could be true music. It could be true sports. It could be true comedy skits. It could be one form of, but something that makes you laugh. Something that makes you calm down. Something that makes you realize that it's not the end of the world. The end of the world is still far beyond your horizon. Are you still in here or you are elsewhere? And people need it. God has so endowed Nigeria in our trying challenges in Nigeria, in the very challenging economic situations. People are beginning to realize that necessity is the mother of invention. Sound like Pastor Yomida is, I mean, Yomida is always so serious. Necessity may make him realize he can be a comedian and make us laugh here. And package it so powerfully, so wonderfully, he realizes that even this auditorium is not enough to handle the people who want to pay him to get them to laugh and relax and cool tension. Business, education, culture, community service, healthcare, integrity. Ha. Some people will pay anything for integrity. There's competence all over the place. But competence that can make it to be plus 4 minus 27. I mean, you give your account books to someone and while he's helping you, he has programmed a software into your whole account that every day, just 1,000 naira must leave your account into his account. And there are 10,000 of you like that. 
<laughs> I was talking somewhere some days ago. I said, you know, some of these bankers and some of the fraud, some of these banks carry out, when they deduct every day, two naira, deduct five naira. I said 10,000. He said, pastor, 10,000 for 10,000 people for where? He said, you're talking about one million people every day. So it looks to you, it's a small thing. Don't let me ask my lawyer to write my bank five naira from you every single day. Some nights I just wake up in the middle of the night. I see a bank heading. I'm hoping it's credit. By the time I open it, I see debit. Ah! Then they say daily uh, consumer, whatever, daily tax something. 15 naira, boom, like that. 15 naira, boom, like that. And I'm not the only one. 10 million people on 15 naira. You can do the calculation. I would like to have the money. What am I saying to us here? As believers, you need to look on the foundation of your Christian life, on the foundation of your revelation of Christ, in what space of human society can you bring competence, can you bring capacity, can you bring skill, can you bring an ability that will make people to be willing. What you are willing to do for free, people are willing to pay for you to do it for them. And so, having said that, concerning capacity for skilled service, let me take it a little bit further here. You need to ask, be able to ask yourself the question, how can I add value within the ecosystem of human society? What value can I bring to the table? How can I make lives better? How can I make situations better? How can I make people to see that their challenges is not overwhelming after all? All they need is this app. If they use this app, that problem will be solved. Furthermore, as Christians, we are challenging us to develop usefulness, to develop relevance, to develop competence upon our spiritual or divine foundations. I'd like us to understand as I take this a little bit further here, what I call avenues for developing skilled capacity. Avenues for developing skilled capacity. One ready avenue that most of us within this civilization can relate to is the avenue of training, the avenue of tutelage, the avenue of scholarship, the avenue of going to school. We all can relate to that. Basically, every one of us must have been through primary school. We all can relate to that. Primary education, secondary ed education, tertiary education, it could be in a nursing school, it could be in school of midwifery, could be in a university, could be in a polytechnic, could be in a university of education or university of medical services. We have university of education within River State. We have university of medical sciences within River State. All right, so that's one area of developing competence or capacity by training, tutelage, scholarship. And the need, every one of us, we need to be challenged to be able to go to school. Some of us need to go back to school. I was talking with a man earlier on today, and he told me how he needed to go back to school and run a part-time program, and he's going ahead in that, making progress with that. The need to go back to school in this civilization cannot be overemphasized. So that's one level of capacity building, capacity development for to be able to offer skilled service. A second level, I want to drop it as an eye opener, but I'm not going to dwell on it. It's what I call capacity by family endowment. Capacity for skilled service by family endowment. And I've been observing, and I've been studying, but I'm not going to teach you that today. But I want to drop it as an eye-opener. You can do your further research. That I come to realize that families, don't let me talk in absolute terms, but I've come to realize that there are families that have peculiar attributes that come with them. 
you just see the member of the family immediately and extended they have certain peculiar attributes that gives them an unfair advantage if i may say concerning some skills some families they have an unfair advantage with singing some it's with comical expressions comedy expressions comedy content for some it's intellectual for some it's musical for some it's musical in terms of singing for some it's musical in terms of production for some it could be like swimming and let me add not just family sometimes even territorial I remember when they were talking in the service of songs about our beloved mom um, in the faith who had gone to be with the Lord and how one of those people testifying and said uh, a time came, she had to travel over the water and they were looking at her, they thought she would be afraid but then they had forgotten that she is a Bielsa woman. That Bielsa woman know they fear water. That can be family, it can also be territorial. That people from that landscape there is just part of the training it's just part of because of the family lifestyle the environmental and situation they must just know how to find their way with water i don't want to dwell here so let me just read a passage and move on from here genesis chapter 4. i've seen families who are unusually endowed with intellect I remember the best graduating student of my set, electrical, I mean, of my set, engineering, University of Lagos. I mean, this guy, Yemi Lalude, I mean, this, I never saw this guy in university library until about year four. You won't see him reading, just, you would think he's reading a novel. He would just sit down on his bed with his leg on his bed and his um, torso, uh, his back against the bed rest. And he's just reading like he's reading a novel and he's reading engineering maths. <laughs> he declared I mean practically every course he fly out true and true from year one to year five and then I realized even his younger ones they were all like that his dad was the first what we call Snapco now Shell his dad was the first manager of that section of Shell and so I realized there's something genetic here for some, it's with music. For some, it's with crafts. For some, it's with one artisanship or the other. For some, you know, there is a family in my vernacular. Let me mention the vernacular, and then I will try to bring meaning to it. There are families that are called Saberedo. There was one young lady I met like that while I was pastoring in England. So then they call her Sabs. So one day I call her, you are, you are, you are from South West Nigeria. What's the meaning of these subs? <laughs> I said, Pastor, it's Sabere Doho. Sabere means, Doho means turning needle work into making money. As a tailor, as a seamstress. So it was like from generation to generation, it was like an inborn inherent ability. For some, it's with farming. Give back to them in the United States of America. There's just something about farming with them. Genesis chapter 4. Go of time, let me read quickly from verse 19 to verse 22. It said, Then Lamech took for himself two wives. This is the beginning of polygamy. This one just decided I'm not marrying one after the other. I'm not marrying one after like 20 years in marriage. I'm going to marry. I'm starting. Do you know that it's already becoming a, a, a trend now? Especially in a place like Delta State. Maybe that's another territorial capacity in the last one year i read several cases i see that man laughing i, I hope i'm not thinking what you're laughing about <laughs> don't worry he understands me he's been here long enough so you see them they marry young man 32 year old man marries two ladies on the same day one big light skin one on the, the other thin dark one and they are, the three of them are smiling and in my mind I'm thinking these ladies are you sure is this smiling laughter from your heart <laughs> is that capacity you answer that question for yourself <laughs> well this is the beginning of polygamy same day decided all these and I don't want to waste my time anyone wants to marry me let them know what they are what, what they are signing in for Lamech took to him for himself two wives. 
The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zila. And Ada and Bo Jabal. He was the father or patriarch of those who dwell in tents and have livestock, livestock farmers. So it looked like it was like a family skill, family competence, family capacity from generation to generation. He said his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father or patriarch of all those who play the harp and flute. So it was like a very music conscious family. And as for Zila, the second wife, she also bought to Balkane. An instructor of every craftsman in bronze. So you want to become a, a blacksmith? You want to become a, a, a bronze, uh, I'm a craftsman with bronze in bronze and iron. And his sister and, and the sister of Tubal King was Neymar. But you see these three people here forming lineages of skilled people with livestock, with uh, uh, um, works of metal, with instruments of music let me leave it there we'll deal with that some other some other time so this is one means of capacity have you noticed some families they seem to have some inherent abilities about them social intellectual physical with with instruments have you noticed that anyone notice any family like that oh you have not noticed here i have noticed i have noticed Stay, stay at your level there. I have noticed. People, you all see, ah, we, is it not the same book I read, this guy read? And you will see seven of them in the family. The same, there's a family in this church I know like that. Minimum, every member of the family, two, one, two, one, two, one, distinction. Then I was told of another family many years ago when I was pastor in Rema. He said in our family, we don't just take first class. We ask, what's your cumulative GPA? What's your cum so it's not just a case of having first class. What's your cumulative GPA? That's how they rank themselves in their family. Because they have several first class in one family. And there are some whole neighbors. They don't even have one first class. All right. Let me make progress. Some families are naturally endowed with street smartness. They don't need all this book, intelligence book, but they know what to do in a given situation. Street smartness. Let me leave it. All right, so that's one level. Family endowment, territorial endowment, which still needs to be developed. On a third level, capacity can be developed for skilled service by divine impartation. Capacity can be developed for skilled service by divine impartation. See, for example, Jacob. Jacob was born into a family of livestock farmers. His father, Abraham, was a livestock farmer, had a large retinue of servants, they raised farmlands. And then also, I, I mean, that's a grandfather. And then also, Isaac was into uh, um, crop farming. And then now, this third generation, Jacob, also got... So, the natural training, the family training, the generational skill was there. But look at a dimension with Jacob here. Genesis chapter 31. And by reason of that skill, that competence, that capacity, he was working with his uncle, became his boss, Laban, for about 21 years. But a divine dimension came to his capacity. A divine impartation came to his capacity level. Genesis chapter 31, I'd like to read from verse 7 to verse 13. Say, um, yet your father has deceived me. You know when he, in this chapter, he had called his wives and concubines, had called, the, um, called them to the field and started to explain what had gone on, how their father's countenance towards him had changed. And then amongst other things from verse 7, because of time, yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks but speckled. And if he said thus, the strict shall be your wages, then all the flocks but strict. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And you see how he went about that in Genesis chapter 30. But now in chapter 31 from this passage, he gave the secret code. The divine angle 
that enhanced his natural competence. The divine impartation, the divine enabling that came upon what he could do naturally and escalated it to another dimension where competition could not match him. His rivals could not compete with him on that level. And that's why I believe God in this house. Locate your field. Locate an area where you can serve humanity, serve society, serve civilization. Because divine backing is coming upon that area of training and scholarship. Divine impartation is coming to put you in a place where competition cannot rival you. You didn't hear that, so you are not responding. Because I won't say it again. All right. He says, so God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And what's the secret? How did it happen? How did divine capacity come upon human capacity? And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived. That I lifted my eyes and saw into the realm of the spirit. Saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks for meeting were streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. Then the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream. Maybe the same dream, maybe another dream, we don't know. In one dream, he saw mating. Ah, these animals, they are not the common ones. Common ones, they are plain and skin. This streak, speckled, gray spotted. So in the same dream, or in another dream, or a second dream, the same night, then the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes now and see. All the rams will leap and leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. Last verse. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. By angelic visitation, angelic encounter, he knew what to do that no other person would do. I read the details in Genesis chapter 30. How will you be dealing with animals you are cutting tree and designing on the branches of the tree? Even if other people did it, because it was not divinely inspired, it should not produce the results it produced. And that's why we need to recognize the place where competence, the place where productivity, the place where capacity can be imparted by the Spirit of the Lord. Look at Joshua, Genesis, I mean Deuteronomy chapter 34. Joshua, Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Was it just wisdom in spiritual things? No, it was wisdom for leading a whole nation. A nation of rascals and rebellious people. But capacity was put in him. That when he spoke some things, it steered in obedience in the people. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. Something was transferred. Something was deposited. It affected his speech. It affected his leadership. It made the people to warm up to him. To obey him. He said so the children of Israel heeded him. As did the Lord had commanded Moses. So the way they regarded and heeded Moses, something out of Moses was transmitted, deposited. And he started to operate at a level of wisdom that was not naturally endowed. May you receive wisdom in this house. Wisdom that comes from above. Wisdom that is easily entreated. Wisdom that is peaceable. Wisdom that brings forth good fruits. Receive divine wisdom. Amen. And look at Moses. Moses was leading not any special nation, a bunch of house boys and house girls, but capacity was given to Moses. Look at Exodus chapter 24. I read verse 12. He says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there. And I will give you tablets of stones. And the law and commandments which I have written that you may teach them. He was not just receiving stones with ink or writing on them. He received capacity. In teaching those things, capacity for adherence was within the altar. Moses was regarded as a prophet. And yet he was not an eloquent man. Because capacity was given by God to him. To instruct the nation and they supernaturally heeded him. And a measure of that grace 
was transmitted by the laying on of hands to Joshua. Look on again, and I will close with this, and I will take it from here next time. Look at Peter and John. They were illiterate. They were not in any special social class. And especially with Peter, he came from the low ranks of fishermen. And probably with John, he came from the elite ranks of fishermen. But listen, something beyond their social background, whether challenged background like Peter as a fisherman, or endowed background like John and James, the sons, uh, I mean, the sons of, Jesus named them the sons of Boanerges. They came from a wealthy fishing family. But look at something about them here. Acts chapter 4, from verse 13 to verse 14. You know, this was when the leaders, the political leaders of the land had gathered and summoned these apostles. How did this layman get healed? The layman we have always passed by to enter service, to enter the synagogue, to enter a, 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 a Jewish service. He said, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained, untrained by scholarship, untrained by eloquence, untrained in the formalized schools of the day. They were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled. They were amazed. What's happening here? And they realized that they are being with Jesus. So there is a capacity being with Jesus transmitted into that. They didn't even know those things were there until demands were made on that dimension. They were solving problems in the nation. They were bringing direction to, um, to confuse. They were bringing direction to confuse people. They were bringing hope to the hopeless. They were working miracles, adding value. A layman suddenly could jump and leap for joy. Joy broke out in the land. Terror struck the Jewish leaders. Look at the next verse here. And seeing the man who, was, who had been healed standing with them, evidence of the gospel, evidence of divine capacity, they could say nothing against it. But listen, I don't want you to get carried away by the miracle working dimension of capacity. Because that was not the only thrust of this man. He said when they looked at Peter and John and they saw their boldness, the boldness dimension, not the miracle working dimension, the same people who a few months earlier, when they, the Bible says for the fear of the Jews, they were hiding in the upper room. Now they were courageous. Now they were bold. Now they were willing to speak to the face of the leaders. The same Jesus whom you crucified. He is risen. And we are witnesses of these things. Hallelujah. Somebody said boldness. The boldness of speech. The boldness of communication. They were unlearned naturally. They were untrained naturally. They were uneducated naturally. But the spirit of God, the spirit of boldness for effective communication was upon them. Capacity. But where I'm going really, I'll take this from next week. I've shown us capacity that can come by scholarship, capacity that can come by family endowment, territorial endowment, capacity that can come by reason of divine impartation, divine enabling. But I'm taking us to a combination of training and impartation, a combination of scholarship, of certification, of tutelage by man, but then there is a divine dimension to bring about an unbeatable combination. Shall we take a bow tonight? I'd like you to begin to look at your life and assess your life. Maybe you're a politician, maybe you're a business person, maybe you're a craftsman, maybe you're a career person. Maybe you have one ability or the other that has been put and, and stirred up in you by training. I'd like you to begin to see how skilled service can make you add value in the society. You need capacity for that. Capacity for skilled service by divine enabling, by scholarship, by, uh, I mean, recognizing your family strengths and the ones you can, that can bring uh, value to society through it.
and engage it and refine it and polish it and deploy it. I'd like you to look at your life tonight. What will you be able to bring to the table? A society is groping in weariness and exhaustion and confusion and darkness and various sectors of the society in need of people of integrity, people of skill, people of competence. What will you bring to the table? What are you bringing to the table? This year, what value are you going to add to yourself to be able to add value to society? I'd like you to pray for yourself. I actually listed three prayers in my notes here. Let me see. Let me read them. I'm going to pray for yourself that God will give you capacity both for natural and spiritual training. I'm going to pray for yourself that God will enhance your capacity for training. Enhance your capacity to learn new things. It's part of our capacity confessions for the year. You're going to pray for yourself that God will, you're going to ask God for impartation to bring his supernatural dimension to your natural abilities and natural endeavors. That God will bring his supernatural dimension to your natural abilities and natural endeavors. That was the demand made of Daniel and his colleagues. Not to come and tell them about the Jewish God. Not to come and speak in tongues in the Babylonian king's court. But what value was he bringing to the table? Values concerning the marketplace of Babylon. So they were trained not in the Bible. They were trained in the Babylonian culture. The Babylonian literature. But remember they had also been trained prior. In the way of the Lord in Judah. So a, 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 a powerful combination. Of the spiritual training. And the environmental training. Made Daniel to be mighty in a foreign land. I'd like you to pray for yourself as we close tonight. That the Lord will give you capacity. To learn both by tutelage and tr natural training. And to also learn in spiritual things. And to know how to marry the two. One will not be discarded for the other. Your spiritual tutelage will not be discarded for a natural scholarship. Natural scholarship will not be discarded because you are going to heaven speaking in tongues. We need a powerful marriage of the two. Ask God to, to enhance your capability. Capacity to learn, capacity to learn new things, capacity for higher proficiency in the areas of your, the longings of your heart, in the areas of your dreams. The dream of Jacob was relevant to the area of his vocation and the empowerment God wanted to bring into his life. He said, I've seen how Laban had treated you. I am the God who appeared to you in Bethel. Pray for yourself for the remaining few minutes. Lord, give me capacity to learn spiritual things, to learn natural things, to be trained and equipped in spiritual things, to be trained and equipped in natural things. Give me capacity to learn new things, to comprehend new things. Give me capacity to bring your supernatural abilities to bear upon my natural endeavors and natural competencies. Like Jacob, you'll be able to bring the divine dimension to enhance, to put you at a level above your equals. 
What made Daniel to become above his equals? Daniel chapter 6. He had an excellent spirit, a divine dimension that set him apart. This year, as you go into business, you go into ICT, you go into politics, you go into governance, you go into entertainment, you go into family life, ask God to give you supernatural endowment to equip you both for spiritual things, spiritual things and in natural things. Ask God to give you the capacity to effectively marry the two. The spiritual in the marketplace. Effectively marry the two. Supernatural ability and natural capacity development. I look at music talent in a family like the Jacksons. Up to three or four of them won, won global awards. Just singing. Yes, the diligence was there. The work was there. But the natural endowment was also there. That was developed. You had Michael Jackson. Had Jeanette Jackson. Had Jermaine Jackson. Had Latoya Jackson. From one family. That's a family endowment discovered and developed. Painstakingly developed and deployed. For you, it may be intellectual. For you, it may be social. For you, it may be for governments, for leadership, whatever. Ask God to give you capacity to develop, to add value to society, to be a problem solver, a solver to be a solution provider, to add value in your field. And so shall it be in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we appreciate you tonight for this privilege you've given to us to receive impartation through your word. By the mouth of your servant, we ask that these words that proceeded from his mouth by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit tonight will produce corresponding effect in our lives in our productivity level, in our skills, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We also pray for your servant, O oh God, more capacity to function as your servant. More capacity, more capacity, strength in the inner man, refreshing of the Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. I want us to celebrate the Lord Jesus. Go ahead and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, for that word, capacity for uh, skilled services. Hallelujah. Please let's go ahead and honor the Lord tonight, viewing online or your own site. Let's just appreciate the Lord. Let's honor him with our offerings and our tithes. Even uh, as the ushers uh, minister to us tonight, if you are viewing online, there's an account that's been displayed on the screen. If you want to give to honor the Lord, you can go ahead and do that. Let's do that. Uh, and also, let's listen attentively to the following announcement. This Saturday, um, we'll be having our prevailers place and time is 6.30 a.m. via the Zoom platform. Um, the Zoom ID is 30, 50, 60, 70, 80. And the passcode is prayer or lowercase. If you want to join us from any location, 6.30 a.m., uh, on the Zoom virtual platform. Um, this Saturday, uh, for those who are connected with our pastors network, the Equipers network, we'll be having a meeting, um, the first of its kind this year. By 12 noon, Equipers network, those who have the call of God in their lives, who relate with our pastor, our spiritual father, mentor, please, if you can make it to that meeting, you will be welcome. And time is 12 noon this Saturday. Equipers Network in this very auditorium. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet tonight. Father, we are grateful for this privilege given to us to honor you with our substance, uh, with our giving, offerings, and tithes. We ask that 
our tithes and offering will be acceptable unto you as a sweet smelling fragrance. We ask for open heavens over uh, open heaven over every giver in the house. We ask that you make a way for those who desire to give but were not able, bring favorable opportunities their ways and impart their life with your blessing that when next they appear in your presence, they will not come empty-handed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Hallelujah. Let's invoke the benediction together, Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to 21. One, two, go. And now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing his side, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.